please, I just want to tell us, let's be very careful and be wary of people that come on the comment section to begin to ask you to donate to a particular motherless uh, whatever home. Please, this is not from us. These are scammers. These are thieves who are stealing in the name of God, unfortunately. Let's keep praying for them. Hopefully, they will repent one day and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. But please don't fall into their hands. They are scammers. They are all over the place using different names of different men of God, cloning their accounts, including my own. May God save us from their hands in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But please don't fall into their hands. Thank you so much. God bless you for sticking around. Modern entertainment Beyond the applause of men We seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Men and women So that for God Beyond entertainment, stay glue, stay tuned with PVO. Habatua, the movie for the season. It's been awesome in season two. Too many testimonies already. Several thousands of testimony in Damilola Mike Bamiloye YouTube channel. You are welcome to Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. This one is a special one today. I tell you the truth and I lie not. You know why? We have interviewed all the major cast of Abatua movie for this season. I'm sure you are so excited about that. So from uh, Chief Duro Sonya to Bade and almost Everybody have been interviewed and that is what you are about to see. So please fasten your seat belt and be ready for an encounter. What happened behind the scene, you know, what are the things that some of the cast and crew are saying about this movie? We all saw the movie, but I tell you, we don't know some of the things that happened behind the scene and today you are about to hear a lot of things. These interviews will blow your mind, I tell you something. So get ready as we see some of the characters, the cast, the crew of Abatua Season 2, the movie that God is using currently to change many lives and to inspire many people. I don't want to talk too much, you know what? Let's see the real deal. Hey, uh Ah, let the light shine above and beyond the darkness to save us from this. Let it cover all of time, regardless of what may resist. It is high time for a brand new revolution. The rising of a new dawn. The rising of a new dawn. The rising of a new dawn. <laughs> All right, hello everybody. My name is Damnola Mike Babiloye. I am the writer, producer, and um, the director of um, the um, YouTube series Abattoir. Excuse me? This third dimension runs on blood. How many lives have you wasted? Since when have you been concerned about how many lives we have wasted? I told you since my... Since your wife and daughter came back into your life. You don't have to tell me. I already figured that out. I knew it. My name is Kaode, Kaode Wojori. Um, some people call me pastor, some people call me evangelist. I don't know. But I am Kaode Wojori, married and I'm doing well with a family. 
of um, a good wife and lovely children, a kingdom of boys and a household of nations. And I give glory to God for that. Uh, season two is a development on what the plot has developed, has started in season one of this um, villain who has a world view that centers around himself and has acquired all manner of um, evil powers to establish himself in that world. And he would not stop at anything to establish himself even further, using politics, using blood, using um, um, humans to achieve his aim. And the, 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 the turn in the uh, story is that he would now want to use his son to perpetuate himself, to rise higher. And that's the turning point because his son wants to meet him man to man. Um, um, and that was the, the essence of two. Can the son meet him man to man? Can he confront his father man to man? Does he need a higher power to confront the evil machinations of his dad? That's the story that we now that the the producer and the writer of the script, uh, um, um, Mike Bamiloye, that's uh, Damilola, developed in season two, and I give kudos to him for that. Uh, uh, I told him that that that's an inspired work. You couldn't just have put that down thinking of um, what a story should be like. It's a wonderful story. But now, Lord, I am my family. I will hand over matters to you. Break the shackles that tie you down in the name of Jesus. Um, Moses Koridiare. By the grace of God, I'm the president of Calvary Drama Ministries International based in Ogomosho, Oyo State, Nigeria. Uh, we started the ministry in the year 1995, September 2nd precisely. And uh, by the grace of God, we've been ministering in places, and God has been taking charge of the ministration. We're also involved in film production. Film production is another arm of the ministry. We produce film, and we also help ministries to package film. Uh, married with a very beautiful woman, Mrs. Bumiare, and uh, God has given us two children, a boy and a girl. So, just a brief <laughs> introduction of uh, the man you are seeing. Hey, 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 girls! Hi! I can see you guys like fun! We don't like fun. We love fun. Obviously. <laughs> so, a friend of mine asked me to pay for everything you guys will be having tonight. Wow. No way. You mean everything we'll be buying? Every single damn thing. My name is Fenifolo CP Ukedare. And I take the role of the club owner in Abatio season two. The role was about a um, club owner that um, organized um, some girls for Chief Durosoya. Well, I featured in about two to three scenes in about your season two. My name is Adebue Gatulu Walokwe Adebanke. I played the role Flora in Abattoir. Flora in season one, he, he was like, okay, she's just coming up in season one. And um, Flora in season two, there's like a bit of a change. Like, okay, after everything that had happened in season one, going to season two, there's a whole lot of um, changes. Like, in she having to struggle with um, nightmares and all that, and she having to be dragged home by her sister. There was a, there was a change from season one and two. My name is Oyewoli Oluwa Timilene, and I play the role of Dile in the season movie Abattoir, and um, that's been a wonderful experience in season two, 
Um, Dilly, as we know from season one, got converted, he gave his life to Jesus as a secondary school boy um, that was caught in the web of sexual molestation. But here in season two, we see that Dilly has grown up. Dilly is now very zealous for God, going around um, from school to school, going around different places, evangelizing, preaching the gospel and all. We also see that Dilly has um, taken up what we can say was the role of Mr. Martins before. Dilly is now um, in a place where he talks to students, you know, like himself, you know, um, a lesson for us is that um, if we leave God's work undone, somebody else will pick it and do it, you know, and there will be no reward for us. God will only reward labors, not excuses. More than entertainment. How about you, as far as I'm concerned, is a miracle. About you, as far as I'm concerned, it's a gift from God. Is a, is, is a film that is full of, I mean, full of suspense. Is a film that um, we, 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 you, you, you will just relate yourself with. It's a film you will try, you will just see yourself moving in. You know, so imagine you seeing yourself moving in, in a film. <laughs> Actually moved in, in Abacho. And I really thank God for the writer of the film, Damilola Mbamiloye. I think it's a revelation. Uh, in all honesty, I am somebody that observes people from distance. Uh, myself and that young man, uh, he never knew that um, I would be saying what I'm about to say now. And I learned a lot. Somebody asked him and said, um, Damilola, you wrote this film about you. And he said, I didn't write it. He said, God, God wrote it. And the person was arguing with him. I said, ah, but you wrote it. He said, no. All through the conversation that, that ensued between him and that other man, he never agreed that the, the story was written by him. He gave the glory to God. He said, it's a story written by God. Let me go back a little bit. I am tired of repeating the same story over and over again. I just wanted to be sure there are no loopholes. Are you saying Mr. Martins asked you to follow him to that empty class? Yes. Why did you follow him, knowing fully well the class was empty? Well, he said he wanted to explain the subject to me in a place where there, were, there was no distraction. What subject? Biology. What topic? Biology. Mm -mm. That's the subject. What topic? Um, it'd be like, say... Is it surface tension? Exactly. But that is physics and not biology. What be the difference? Are you seriously asking me the difference between physics and biology? My name is um, Tolu Alokwe Charles Adegbo. And um, I acted the role of Ben Ro, who was introduced um, in Abatio Season 2. Of course, I'm a drama minister. Um, well, I'm into ministry. Let me say partly for now, not for time. And I'm, I'm married. <laughs> Happily married to the glory of God. My name is Adigbala Goodness Mofifoliwa. I'm a child of God and a drama minister. I write by God's grace. And in the series Abattoir, I play the role of young Martins in season one and season two. In season two, I had a cameo appearance. You know, he may look violent and brutal on the outside, mm. but I know on the inside, he has a very gentle and sweet spirit. Martins, what's the problem here? What kind of question is that, Daddy? Can't you see a problem? Martins, don't you like it here? Get me out of here! Martins, tell me what you don't like here. And I will change it. Is it the delusion? Daddy, why are you talking like that? If he tells you he doesn't like this house, are you going to change the whole house? I want to go home. Home? This is home. Ah! The blood of Jesus! The blood of Jesus! The blood of Jesus! <laughs> 
I'll continue to break things in this house until you show me the way to my house. My name is Mrs. Okoyemi Bodurin, a drama minister, a married woman, and uh, blessed with wonderful husband and lovely daughters. When I was called to Abatio season two, my reaction was like, <sighs> because I did, I did not expect that call. Thank you, Dami. God bless you. I played the role of Bade's wife. Hello, Jennifer. Yes, how are you? We are looking for Nike. Do you know where she is? You, you don't know. <sighs> Thank you. This girl will not kill me. You better don't kill yourself. Yeah, you, sh you, you should not. You, should, you are the one that should not kill yourself. You will not kill yourself with hypertension. Uh -uh. What is wrong with you? What trash are you spilling from your mouth? All right, yeah, my name is Victor Luko PVO. I play the role of uh, Barista Adebola in the movie Abatua in season one and season two. Uh, Barista Adebola is that very, very serious minded fellow. Um, we could see, of course, the role he played in season one, how he had to put the wife away, you know, because um, she messed up uh, big time by, by uh, messing up with the son, uh, who happens to be the stepson of, um, of the wife of Barista Debola. We saw how the event turned out in season one and how Barista Debola got converted by, by, by that experience, you know. First, it was the son that met Jesus, and then Barista Debola also met Jesus Christ, you know. And so, well, season one ended, and we thought that uh, it was over, you know. I never knew that Barista Debola uh, was um, coming back in season two, but something actually gave me the clue when uh, we saw Barista Debola giving Baba Benro that card and said that if you need my services, uh, then you can call on me. That gave me a clue that it is very, very likely that this character will still have a role to play in uh, season two. And it turned out to be exactly what I thought. But the role he played uh, was not what <laughs> I was thinking. It's, it's season two. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, I don't know what to say about that movie, but um, of course, all of us, we have seen it today, how the Lord is using season two of Abatua to bless a lot of lives. And I want to thank God for that privilege and opportunity to be part of Abatua, the movie. Have you ever wished death for anyone, Mr. Adekbala? No. Oh. Lucky you. <laughs> Several times I've... Uh, killed my father in my heart, but that man has refused to die. When you have an enemy that has refused to die, why don't you pray for him to leave? If he leaves, then he will continue to persecute me. Well, Jesus Christ himself said you should pray for those that persecute you. No, he wasn't talking about my father. If he wasn't talking about the devil, certainly he was talking about your father. My name is Adeola Adetoye and I played the role of Sandra in Abatua season 2. Sandra is a new character in season 2 and um, well I followed through season 1 and it was a very very interesting one to me. So by the time I was reading the script for season 2, um, trying to get into character for the role Sandra it wasn't so challenging because I was just reading through as, as per continuing what I had watched already in season one. So it was quite good and um, fitting into the role of a sister to so Flora wasn't a bad one, it was good as well. So uh, while I was reading the script, it was very interesting to me. So I just keyed into it. What's going on? You are going home. You once begged me to stay. So what's all this about? I once begged you to stay when I needed you. But now I don't need you. Whether you need me or not is none of my business. What I know is I'm staying here until you make up your mind to follow me home. Sandra. Sandra. I am not safe. But you be safe with me. 
you don't understand. There are three men. They want to kill me. And if they don't find me, they will kill you. And where are you getting all these things from? I know. I had a dream. I saw them. You are a good girl. You don't deserve to die now. Please go home. Can't go home. I'm not going home except you go with me. My name is Toby Olumuiwa. Ogenemaru, what is your problem? By the grace of God, in the movie Abattoir, I took um, some roles as a member of crew and cast. For the cast, I took the role of Surutu, the Suya man. I'm a Suya, you won't buy me, my boys. Just arrange your shop. Oh, yeah, yeah, guys. 1K, 1K. Sharp, 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 sharp. That girl, when they call Flora, that fair complexion girl. <laughs> Flora, my flower. <laughs> you sabi where they stay? You don't have to the law. <laughs> the law. Why are you yeah. defying Flora house? Uh, I just want to ask her some personal questions. Mm. The law. I, I no go tell anybody. Tell me the truth now between me and you. Why are you defying that? So, if I tell you, you no go believe. Just tell me where she they stay. The law. Mm. Mm. Okay. Eh. Uh, if you don't go. If you don't go straight like this, you go see one transformer. Okay, transformer for death. Uh -huh. okay. Just branch by the right. Okay. Don't turn right, yo. They go straight. You go come see one deserted house. We'll be like graveyard. Now, okay. there she did. Thank you very much, Ruth. Right. Okay, jam, okay, jam. Chop, chop. The law, the law. Eh, uh, get Leo. Uh -huh. You know, say so you get case tomorrow. Make you say, may you don't do it. Uh, may you don't be called case. The law. Okay. You savvy the tattoo. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Ah, the law. Uh, well, season one, there's a, there's a big difference actually between season one and season two. Uh, I think technically, first of all, technically there's a, there's a difference. Um, we've kind of grown, we've improved over time of shooting in season um, one. So we've learned from our mistakes in season one and we try to rectify that in season two. That's number one. Number two is the, um, I can say it's like God kind of hyped the, um, the intensity of the message. Season one was uh, like more like a drama. It was normal. It was good, but it was calm. Season two was is another level again. You know, it was it's kind of it's like God taking into another dimension. You know, the revelation was deep. I remember writing the script, and there are times I would just stay in that room and I'll be praying. I say, God, you have to give us something hotter than season one. Thank you for what you've done in season one, but season two has to be hotter. You know, and God came through. You know, He gave us a message that um, people. You know, consistently will tell us, I can't wait for the next episode. I can't wait for the next Sunday to come. I can't wait. I can't wait. I know, and that's the joy. You know, when people are coming together now, you know, and seeing that you know, gospel film has gone into another level, another realm. Not just in Mount Zion, but in other drama ministries, we are seeing messages that put people at the edge of their seats. You know, so I think that's what season two really did. They kind of put people at the edge of their seats. The, the, the suspense was there, the tension was there, and most importantly, the message was there, which is the message of salvation. I am Chief Duro Sawyer, first in rank, holder of the secret seal. And I am Martins, a child of God and holder of his word. <laughs> Do you know what you've just touched? Fire! I mean, fire! 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 I played the role of Duro Sawyer. Some people link, some people call the name as one. They call it Duro Sawyer. But it's Duro Sawyer. The first name and the last name, Duro so yeah, so that's the role I played. Now, um, concerning, is there a twist in the story or is it um, a development that caused the twist? I think it's both. The twist in the plot is that Chief Duro Sawyer desires to scale higher hurdles to attain the role or um, to move beyond his current depth in the evil cultist world. And he needed more blood. And he needed the cooperation of his son. Is he now more evil? Yes, he's more evil. 
Why is he more evil? Because evil um, perpetrates where there is confrontation. So if I have an evil intent and somebody confronts me, I want to show the person that I have greater power than him in the realm of the uh, spirit. Now, his son will not agree with him that he belong on the same realm. His son, just because of the resentment of what he did to um, his mother, will not want to belong to his world. And Chief Durosoya needs his son, and he would not stop at anything to get his son. And he continued in that realm, and the son would not want to come along. Unfortunately for the son, God, he got the right atmosphere, spiritual atmosphere of belonging, uh, of, um, of, of salvation in Christ Jesus. That's those who have already been saved, surrounded in um, his foster parents, his lawyer, and um, his former students, all created a spiritual environment that enhanced his um, opposition, his contrast to the to the evil desires of his father. And that's the story to me that kind of made Chief Sonia more evil while the son is more bent on, um, on, on, on resisting his father. My name is Ife Uluwa Uluwa Tishé. I took the role of the warder in season two, episode five. The distinguishing factor was that this particular warder was the warder that was a bit closer to the major character and it was due to the fact that the the major character happened to see jesus so when he saw jesus he was behaving mental so i remember there was a script there was a line in the in the script that i was asking him and i said that but well, why are you behaving like a madman and then he said that you can't see Jesus and be normal. Jesus is real. He was here. Is this why you've not been acting normal? Ah, you can't see Jesus and be normal. It's not possible. Um, my name is Oluwa Joba Dikpoju Anderson. Um, I'm the sound recordist on About Two set. About the script, well, while I was reading About Two <laughs> it was so captivating. I was like, wow. Like I was seeing everything, you know, before we went on set, I was seeing everything in the script. I, you know, I, I was picturing how people would be like on the tips of their ch edge of edge, edge of their chairs and expecting so much from the movie, you know, suspense and everything. The the roles were amazing. The storyline was superb, and it was amazing. So when I got on set and I you know I saw this person playing this role, like wow, this is like I imagined, you know. Seeing um, the role of Martins, the role of Sonia, <laughs> I was just emphasizing how people will feel when they, they see more cruelty from Duro Sonia and other parts. And also the directing as well. Well, Damn Lola Mike Bamley is an amazing director, of course. Yes, he, you know, he, he brings out the best from the, from the cast. They interpret the role perfectly and it's always amazing and superb. And little bit tiki wiki, little bit tiki wiki. Ah, see my little tell little bit. Don't touch my face. Eh? If you forgot my name, all you have to do is ask. What's ah. Tiki Wiki? Gosh! Hello, everybody. My name is Sharon Tops Oluko Drew. I'm a 500 level law student of the University of Ibadan. I'm a drama minister. I'm an artist. Yeah. I'm a child of God. <laughs> a child of God, and I love God so much. So, I guess that's a brief introduction. That's me. I played Nike in the movie Abatoa. Nike is Nike is Inspector Bade's daughter who just got back from the UK with her mom. Nike is Nike is saucy, she's spoiled, she's I don't 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 mess with me kind of person. Like I don't take rubbish. She's that kind of person. And she's also naive, yeah, you see her, you see that she is very easily swayed by, you know, her friends. She can't make decisions for herself. She finds it difficult to make decisions for herself. Her friends are always saying, oh, do this. It's wherever her friends are going that she wants to go or you get. So she's just very, she's naive. 
and she also um, gives us insight into one aspect of Inspector Gbadi's life that we haven't seen before, and that is his softer side because his family is now here, his wife and daughter are now here, so you see him we see him just being softer, like even Inspector Gbade, you cannot say that he's capable of emotions, capable of caring for somebody, capable of, you know, considering, even though he was still evil, but you just see the softer side of him. And there was a part where um, Chief Sonia was like, that this is not you, this is not the you that I know, and because your family is here, right? So she just gives us insight into that aspect of, Inspector Gbadi's life, and she's someone who felt like down the line she felt like she was disappointed by her father because of what she discovered that he spent money on somebody, a prostitute, while he abandoned abandoned her and her mom in the UK. So she's very disappointed, and that leads her to make some decisions that leads her to her destruction. So she you know that in the beginning she wasn't like the biggest fan of her father from the beginning because you see the initial hostility when she came she was like don't touch my face and all of that so finding out that he has actually this is what he has been doing while he left them so that just increases her you know anger and you know whatever thing she had against him and that just leads her to make some of those decisions that she made which led to her destruction and so Nike is that person that um, her character or the role she, the role I played as Nike's character um, leads to, I feel like that is going to be a major part of season three because it is the death of Nike that ends season two. And that's, you know, created like a very serious conflict between Inspector Bade and Chief Soyan, that is gonna be a hot one. So, Nikkei is that her, her character is that is what led what's going to I feel like it's what's going to lead to like the major conflict in the coming season. So, yeah, my name is Adekunle Do. I played the role of gang leader in Abattoir season two. So the role of the gang leader in Abattoir is a very serious role. And uh, my interpretation of that role is just that some careless guys that are being used by this big political or uh, the big shot in the society just to satisfy their own selfish interest. That's just it. Are you mad? I'm not supposed to teach her to do your job. Boss, boss, I'll personally find her and kill her. You better do. Yes, boss. Continuity manager for about two season two. Uh, another work for continuity manager is script uh, supervisor. So uh, my work is to monitor the script, the way we are shooting, the number of things that we are able to cover per day, and the one that is remaining, managing the schedule for the shoots. So that that's the basic work of continuity manager is a story that is somehow unique even asking the writer to tell us about it he will be telling you that it's something that he cannot he himself cannot comprehend so we that are working with the script is like wow <laughs> so it's something beyond our expectation though we have been working on different scripts for many years, but now uh, we are seeing something new, new dimension that God is taking script writing and Christian film to. That line was very punchy. So because he saw Jesus, it was, you know, it was making him run mental in the presence of others. And I was assigned to him specially to be his, you know, 
to be his personal water in which i had to just take him to the hospital bring him back here here and there and have personal interaction with him that was that was the major role so it was more of it was more of a water being a brother at the point because when things were changing you know he had to just he had to lead the water even to christ so um i had to act as the water who actually became a brother based on their relationship you know um the major character happened to bring in more life in the sense that when he was acting mad then the bro the the water was suspicious that what could have been wrong with him and then he said that he saw jesus that you cannot see jesus and remain normal so you know that not even made the water think otherwise and like he wanted to experience the same jesus he was experiencing because he was loving the kind of madness <laughs> the person was experiencing well avatar season two um, is more exciting more twists and turns uh, more things to surprise you and more i would say more shocks yeah in avatar season two the directing by um damilola in season two happens to be more unique in the sense that it gives you the flexibility to actually do it first if he sees that you are not hitting what he wants he goes for that to bring out the depth in that character that that actor um, is acting which um, gives more um, more more finesse to the role and i would say his camera shots um, his camera angles are very very unique okay so for example when talking about shots I'll say, I believe you've seen the shots in the club scene. And some of the, uh, yeah, you've seen the scenes in the club. I guess you understand what I'm saying by his camera angles and some of his cutaways. It's so exciting. Another thing I have learned from the life of Dele is that um, it's always good to remember one's creator in the day of the youth. Dele is somebody that is on fire for God, as they would say. Though many times we still see traits of childishness, you know, traits of um, immaturity in the way he communicates and the way he, he um, does his things. But we can't deny that Dele is on fire for God and Dele loves the Lord and Dele has gone all out with this gospel well i must confess i must confess uh, i've acted in few movies by the grace of god but i've always been looking forward uh, to the day that god will grant me the opportunity to act as a lawyer you know and abatua happened to be the first time you know i was acting uh, as a lawyer it was quite an experience for me especially at the courts, at the courts, when uh, we had to argue cases, you know, a lawyer was on set actually to um, help us to say, okay, you don't say it like this, this is the way to say it, you know, and I tell you, uh, it was a very, very wonderful experience for all of us, especially those of us that were at the court scene. It was moving, you know, many of us were teary, especially when Damilola uh, was acting that particular place when it was, you know, um, he almost won the case, you know, but the emotion uh, part of him, you know, um, got everything and then he messed up um, the case um, altogether and he had to go back to, um, he had to go back to the cell where they kept him. Ah, well, acting as a lawyer was quite an experience and of course, I don't see Abatua as a departure from what I do naturally because Abatua is a movie not just for the family uh, but for the youth, for an average youth. And I am sure that um, everybody has got one or two lessons to get from Abatua. And uh, with the testimonies that we are seeing, with what we are hearing, we know that God has used that movie to impact lives. And I really want to thank God for that.
Martins, Martins, Martins. There was a scene where they confronted each other and he said, I am the son. I am the son. And the one said, I am Chief Julosonya. So it's a battle of kingdoms. When the battle of kingdoms occur, the superior kingdom would, would come on tops. And I leave that to the completion of the story. The writer and the producer, Damilola Mike Bamlue, I said, Flesh and Blood has not revealed this to you. You are delving into the secrets of occultism by inspiration and by revelation. And there can be no end to us what God will continue to tell him to give to us so that we will know that we do not war against the flesh uh, and, and what we war uh, against in the spirit. The Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. The lesson here is that you cannot fight a spiritual battle with carnal war, war uh, machines in carnality, in flesh. You cannot. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Any force that will pull down the strongholds that have been built by and around Chief Durosoya must have the power of God behind him. Now, what's the lesson to us? As children of God, we are confronted daily by powers who flaunt themselves as being dominant against us. You don't have to go against them and be saying, eh, you can't do me anything, you can't do me anything. What you have in you, you have a greater force in you. That, power, that verse says that, 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 that we do not war against the flesh, but again, he says in, 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 let me take that again. He says in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 12, that the weapons of our warfare are built to walk in the spiritual forces against principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in the heavenly places. Now, how do you confront those, the powers you don't see physically, except you have a superior power, which takes us into what Corinthians is saying. Every child of God must come to, an, to the stage whereby you are bold. You are bold to confront spiritual forces, and that's what... I, I, my take home from um, the story of Abattoir. <laughs> Abattoir, Abattoir. A really super amazing movie. I'm sure everybody can, can testify to that. With Duro Sire. Duro Sire and Badi, that's going to be the talk of war. They are going to be expecting what going to be the aftermath of um, their battle in season three, I guess. And also, Martins is finally free. Who saw that coming? Nobody saw that coming. You know, Flora and Sandra, how Flora was close to dying. Sandra was all that. Actually, when I saw the movie, see the script, I knew that Sandra would probably be a weak point for Flora. So I was expecting something like that in the movie. And also about Benro's ginger voice. That yeah, Martin's boy, ginger I does too much for me though. And you guys saw how the man would do anything to save, you know, Martins. And I don't know if they got, you know, got turned up for them and it was amazing. And what else again, that was basically everything. Martins is free and hopefully everybody will not get get you know will not um, touch Martins in season three. And Nick, uh, Nick is another character that actually, you know, I was, when I was on set and I was seeing it when um, Dele was trying to preach to her and tell her that, okay, you'll give your life to Christ. And she was teen next week. I was like, wow, if this girl could do that, waited for five seconds to, you know, listen to what this guy is saying and give her life to Christ. She might not have does, you know, made that kind of end. But, you know, <laughs> it is what it is, man. But yeah, so that's, that's, that's what's up. But uh, watch out for season three. It's going to be mind blowing and I'm privileged to be. No, the sound recorded it again. I believe that it is a revelation directly, directly from God to a man like that. It's, 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 a, it's a wonderful time. It's, uh, and uh, because of Abatio, <laughs> I know I've been doing many, many things before, 
But it's like I just started film. People began to call me, go to bank, ah, Baba Gbero, on the street, ah, Baba Gbero. What really moved me so much? It's not just because so many people now began to recognize the grace of God in our lives. See, Baba Gbero, Baba Gbero everywhere. I went to another location, not Monsignor location, just I went for a location at um, Lagos. And I was just preparing to be on set. And I saw a child, maybe around three, four, definitely not more than four, more than four, not more than four years. And the child moved where I was trying to change. And it was, the child was, Baba Bimbo, Baba Bimbo, Baba Bimbo. Honestly speaking, I never, I, never, I never got to know what that young child was referring to. I never knew the child was talking about me. Until when I paid a little attention to the child, and I looked at the child, the child was looking at me, and said again, Baba Bimbo. Ah, and I knew that she was actually calling Baba Bimbo a young child, a child of three, four years. That tells you how much uh, the role of Baba Bimbo have really, really struck the people. And I thank all of you viewers for liking Baba Bimbo. The only thing is that uh, the responsibility <laughs> that uh, people think Abagboro should carry out is quite enormous. Uh, people now don't even, don't even think that it is a film. A lot of messages say, okay, cancel me. My child is so, 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 so. Is where what is this? Cancel me. They see Abagboro. <laughs> they see me that, that actually play the role of Abagboro as somebody like Jesus who will really have solution for virtually everything. I have a lot of messages and a lot of calls on the on that room about being wrong. My prayer is this, that God himself will help me to be able to fit him properly into the role of Baba Bunro in life, not just in film. Away from my arms I have waited for so long for your return so welcome home. and then um, as a crew member i was the assistant director and also saddled with the responsibility of assisting the dop you know the dop happened to be a cast so any time is on set i had to shoot i didn't prepare to be assistant dop actually i thought i was just going to face my um directing line assisting directing line but joshua was busy with um making the first episode ready so and it happened to be the same time we we're shooting so t baba just told me ah, toby you'll be the one to shoot tomorrow i said ha ah, black magic ha ah. but well god helped us you see when you are working with a man that has god's covenant in his life it rubs on you so I, I want to say I'm just enjoying the grace of God that he has deposited in that Bamiloye family in Mount Zion. So anything I did there, I don't think I, it's something I'm prepared to do. It's not something I have learned. But that grace just dropped. So it was, it was easy. It was like I was doing the simplest thing on earth. I, I found it very easy to do anything it, it told me to do. So I, I found it fun. It was, it was a great thing to do. It was not stress at all. No stress for me. You know, even at a point, ah, God bless the Baba. At a point, he will say, Toby, I'm done with all the, he's not on set, though. he's the DOP. He will say, ah, Toby, I'm, I'm done with everything I should shoot. But I feel there is something in your mind. There's a shot you want to take. I say, Toby, don't tell me about the shot. Just shoot it. Ah. So there was this scene. The, the gang leader was running down from a staircase, he shot it. He was not on set, so he, he shot it. And then um, he just came up and said, Toby, I feel there's a, it's not like I told him that I have a shot in my mind. He said, I feel there's a shot in your mind. I said, so I wanted to respond that, um, he said, don't worry, don't worry, just shoot it, shoot it. I trust you, don't tell me anything about it. I was like, wow, how can someone just entrust you with decision like that? If not that, he feels connected with you. So I, I, I think I am happy working with him when, when you see a boss that, that is relating with you out of trust and is your friend, why, why won't things bond together? So I, I'm so much grateful to God. There are a lot of things he ought to do himself, not like he's on set. But he'll say, Toby, go and do it. 
you know when when someone that's one of the things that encourage people to work when they trust that well even when you are making a mistake there are some things i shoot and i'll be like ah i feel this is not okay i mean say ah no no no, no it's good ah. i am saying that there is an order from the top that nobody should see even his lawyer yes sir you are sergeant rufus sergeant rufus you are an officer of the law I am an advocate of the law. If our war should clash, it will be yours against mine. This phone is on record. Whatever you say will be used against you at the court of law. Sergeant Rufus. Are you saying I, Barista Degbola, cannot see my clients? Is that what you are saying? What they told us was that. No! Shut up your mouth. Where are your standards? Can't you see he's an advocate of the law? My Barista, um, who are we to deny you access to see your clients? <laughs> Please, kindly follow me, sir. What about? No, no, no. Just you. <laughs> After you. Thank you, sir. Being on set of Abatua was, was a great experience for me from season one to season two. You know, we had to go several times. Like Dami decided to split the uh, six uh, seasons, I mean six episodes into blocks. All right. We first shot season one and two. We went on break, you know, for about one or two weeks or thereabouts. And then we shot season three and four. Then we left again for, you know, some weeks. And then we came back to shoot um, season five and six. We started uh, since last year. And then here we are today. Uh, we give thanks to God. Quite very wonderful experience acting with um, my wonderful brothers. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the character Dele, Dele, who... <laughs> who happens to be the spiritual father of his biological father. You know, it was quite funny. Uh, I want to say that that young man is quite a phenomenon. That young man is, is a very wonderful young man. You know, the way he memorizes his script is something very, very wonderful for me. You know, when I'm say, trying to struggle with my lines, he knows all his lines, you know. And sometimes when you're acting with somebody like that, you just have to brace up. <laughs> so that you don't mess him up. Thank God for that young man. He's doing so well, you know. And this, he, he, he was able to carry that secondary school, um, you know, face and character. All right, so uh, the, the young man that played the role, Dele, not many will know that he's already a graduate from the University of Ibadan, you know. But he was able to play the role of a young man in secondary school very, very well. May God bless him. May God bless, you know, uh, Damilola Bamiloye and... Um, Everybody on that set, you know, the man that acted Chief Duro Sonya, and that is Daddy Kayode Owojori. Ah, uh, man, man, man. A gentle, humble, quiet man was able to interpret a role of a fiery cultist who everybody, if you see him physically now, you want to get afraid of him because of the way he has been able to interpret that role. Quite, quite, quite awesome. May God continue to bless people like that. Kayo de Babalola who played the role of uh, chief uh, uh, inspector. Is he inspector now? Uh, who played the role of Bade was, was, was something else. All the cast, all the crew, very, very wonderful. You know, the movie, it's, it's, um, if you're talking about standard, you know, we can see all the standards there. We, we can see the lighting. We can see the camera angles. We can see a whole lot of things. Thank God for Damilola, thank God for the uh, directing, the, the, the lighting, and everything about that movie, you know, um, it's, it's just on point. And I thank God for what God, has, um, what God has done and what the Lord is actually doing, especially in uh, gospel movie making today. You know, for me, I see it as a revival that has already begun. A revival has started and it's moving, it is spreading. I look forward to a time that we have a complete year and every week, maybe every Sunday, we have a fantastic gospel movie on YouTube, you know, and uh, we take that on 
for a whole year. I'm looking forward to that time, and I know it will come to pass by the grace of God. Yeah. Hello. Good day, everybody. My name is Kayo De Babalola. I play the role of uh, Inspector Gbadi, retired. Uh, IG, retired IG of police in the, in the series Abatoa. Uh, you know, something fantastic about um, Abatoa is that, uh, you know, when you see a story inspired by the Holy Spirit, it keeps evolving, it keeps, it keep, it keeps seeing th new things every day, something that you are not really prepared for. Yes, there's, there's the grace for script writing, but beyond that, uh, you can see the place of the Holy Spirit in it, in that the person writing doesn't even know what is next. He also is depending on the Holy Spirit to, to, to reveal the next step. Season 1 about you is very, very different from Season 2 about you in, in so many ways. You know, um, one of the things I like about you a lot is that, uh, you see, my mother-in-law does not cook one type of vegetable. So if, if she's cooking a vegetable soup, she will, she will combine about four or five different types of vegetable into one vegetable soup. And that's what abattoir is, is like. You see a message for everyone. You see different messages for different categories of people. And it's so fantastic. It's like a poopery of, um, of flour. It's so fantastic. Different, different things that will, um, that will jump at different types of people. A, a young person, an older person, a man, a woman, working class, Christian, pastor, child of God, home believer, everyone has a message for them. There's something for everyone. For Inspector Badi, season one and season two are different in that there's a, there's a, different, there's a difference in their characterization. You know, we, we saw what Inspector Badi in season one, but the one we saw in season two is very different. In season one, it was a sidekick to uh, Sonia and he is ready to do anything to please his master, you know, anything terrible, anything. No matter how terrible it is, kill people, maim. We see him killing people for free in season one. We see him squeezing the neck of one girl and all that. And we, we saw how he planned for Martins so terribly. Scheming, you know, strategizing and all that. But in season two, early season two, there was an introduction of his family. And that is kind of a game changer. My babies are here. <laughs> Tell it to be tiki wiki, 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 tell it to be tiki wiki. Well, um, I believe that is a movie that would um, call us to action, would make us see the importance of reaching out to the lost. Um, I know there was a part where Dilly went for an outreach and he met Nikkei. You know, um, there are many people around us who are in the position of Nike that if only we share the gospel with them, they would be able to see the light of Jesus. At least let's give us, let's give, at least let's give them a chance. Even though in the movie, Nike made a wrong decision. But who knows, others might make a right decision and their souls might be saved from destruction, both in hell and right, and even here on earth. So I expect that um, it will be a call to evangelism, it will be a call to love, to working in love, it will be a call to trusting in God, because really, everybody that tried to do things in their own strength in the series, you know, all failed, you know, reminding us of what the Bible says, the arm of flesh will always fail, you know, but we know that with God, everything is possible. We should also know that without God, we can't do anything. I think that's the whole point of drama, being somebody that you are not, and one of the things that I do is, I, like I've said before, I depend on the Holy Spirit because in my strength, I really cannot do much. And then I try to think the thoughts of the character when I'm playing a character. So I try to, I believe that convincing acting will come from inside out. So I try to make myself 
think the thoughts of that character. Try to, you know, like we say, enter into the character. So I'm thinking, my father threw me out of the house. I'm in a totally different place. I don't know these people. What are they saying? Why are they giving me food? Why is she smiling? So when I'm thinking those thoughts, it makes the expressions to sort of flow better. And also, I'm grateful for good directing. Uncle Tammy always helps, you know, to bring out the best in one with his excellent directing skills. So yeah, in all, God takes the glory. And uh, let me say, first and foremost, I thank God, thank God for whom God is. Because when I got the scripts, I, I have to, you know, it's like when they said you are eating, I chew it, I eat it, I face mirror, I have to face it as if I am in the view of everybody. So I have to first and foremost to enter into that character because I know what it means to marry to that kind of a man called Bade. And coupled with the fact of what the script entails, I, I, I thank God because it is the grace of God. And I thank God for, for the strength, how the whole thing turned out to be. I'm so sorry you had to see that baby girl. You know, there are so many mad people in this country. That woman wasn't mad. Excuse me? She may be drunk, but she wasn't mad. She knows you. So you believe the words of a lunatic over your father's words? My father in his words called her name. So yes, I believe the words of a lunatic. Okay. Take me home, please. Listen, your mother does not have to know about this, huh? You're right. She doesn't deserve to know that her husband spent a million naira on a lunatic. But she struggles to get a dem from him. Home, please. Yeah, that's the role I played. I remember when I was told that I was going to be playing a role in Abattoir. I was like, huh? <laughs> It was Bertobi that told me. Bertobi was the one that delivered. And before he even delivered the news, Karamo it was like, Sharon, hmm, hmm, Sharon, hmm. And I'm like, what is it? And he told me that you're going to be playing a role in number two. And I'm like, OK. I w it was a mixture of fear, excitement, panic. Am I going to be able to deliver Jesus about, ab about what? Because Avatar was like Avatar is before I even before before I knew about the fact that I was going to be playing a role season one, Avatar topped my list of Mount Zion movies. Like this is my best Mount Zion series movie so far. So it was it's something that I was looking forward to season two. A lot of people were looking forward to season two. So I'm like, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to get to play be a part of this. Wow. I ran to God. I'm like, God. <laughs> Literally, that night was just me saying, God, God, God. And I just, I just prayed, pouring out all my fears and all my anxiety, my everything. I just really prayed that night that, God, I don't know how, but you're going to have to help me. Because I just really prayed. I prayed that. I remember praying so seriously that night and even subsequently just praying for God to just because I'm like am I am I am I sure I can do this so it was just my reaction getting that role was just a mixture of like I said before a mixture of excitement a mixture of excitement fear anxiety and just all of those feelings and I just thank God for how he worked through me and through everybody that was part of this production. I just thank God for taking all of the nerves away and just helping me to deliver that role as I did. Who is Flora? Ah, ah, Flora. Flora is my personal person. Ah, I know her very well. She's my babe. In fact, the name I used to Flora is Flora, my flower. Ah, she's doing very well. She used to cooperate. She said to me very well. And me too, I said to her. What is her occupation? 
Na oku. <laughs> oku. Flora no get occupation. Wait till be oku, occupation. Is she a student? Ha ha. Flora. She's not a student. Ah. She don't go school, self. I know book than Flora. And I don't know how to read. In season one, Sorutu was this just this customer friendly somebody. But season two, we we saw another part of Sorutu. You know, he 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 talks anyhow, he overexpresses himself. What is not needed, he will eventually say it. So look at what happened at the court. <laughs> ah, Father Lord. Surutu started he, he, he started the cause of the disruption of the court order. So if Surutu behaved himself, the court will still be in order, but you know, he broke the first rule by dialing a number in the court. And um, getting to that character was serious work for me. Because ah, it is well, that guy is not is uncultured. So Surutu was another person entirely in season two. He, he talks too much. He, and in fact, when we're shooting the Suya spot point, and then um, the owner of the Suya person was an outside guy. So when we finished, he called me. He said, ah, Surutu, Surutu, now you be real Surutu. I said, ah, why did you say so? He said, oh, you people, and I don't know the meaning of Surutu. I said, I, I don't know, what's the meaning? He said, somebody that talks too much, that can disturb with talk. I said, okay. I even thought Surutu is like Wahala, like Mabe Fa Surutu. I will cause Wahala for you. But when he said, ah, somebody that talked, and he said I acted it very well. I was just talking, 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 talking. Oh. So when I met with Dibaba, I said, ah, Dibaba, what, what made you give this guy Surutu name? And he said, ah, he just felt led that that's the name that the guy should carry. I said, Dibaba, do you know the name of Surutu? He said, I, I don't know. And I now told him, wow. He said, this must be God. Because indeed, Surutu is a noisy person. Season two is deep. Comparing to season one, season one is okay. It's not like it's not okay, but you know, we are climbing up in the stairs of climax. What happened? What happened? Even as a crew member, I was reading it like it was happening in real life. I was angry at some point that. Why would this person write this thing like this? Have mercy on this character. You know, it means God helped the writer to, God helped him not to be sentimental in writing. You know, sometimes you are writing and you want to pity some characters and you're like, ah, let's take it easy with this person. You, know? ah, you are careful about what people will say. No! God helped Dibaba to put things in order. So the story is, is great. Season one, marvelous. Season two is, oh God. First of all, we were writing as the spirit leads, because which is the most important thing. Writing as the spirit, as the spirit of God leads. There are times when I will cry to God, I say, God, look, I need a message. I need your message, not my message. You know, it's easy for me to write, but I don't just want to write. I want to receive. I don't want to conceive. You know, if I conceive, it's going to be from me, but if I receive, it's going to be from him. And most importantly, want to be representation, want to represent God's agenda on earth. You know, so I was particular of that, of that fact. You know, so um, number one, right now, the spirit leads. Then also number two, the goal for me was each episode must have a message. Episode one, as was, if you watch episode one, the the, the prayer for me, the goal for me was that everybody will watch. If you watch an episode, it will look like a full film. You will feel satisfied that yes, if, ah, this is a, this is loaded, you know. So each episode should be loaded, and each episode should have a message, you know, so that people will not spend 45 minutes and at the end of the day, there is nothing to gain for it. So because the the, the 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 message is in the next episode, no, we want each episode um, to have a message. That was that that's the goal, you know. So, and also, of course, before that can act, actually happen, it has to be uh, by the spirit. God has to be in control. You know, God has to lead you, inspire you to do the writing. Yeah. All right, my name is um, Olua Tomisi Akita of Fashola, and um, I'm the set, how would I put it now? The one that built the set, like I produced the set, built the set, constructed the set in Abattoir. Um, I'll start with uh, Flora's house. We built Flora's house from the scratch, like we bought, Flora's house is made of wood. 
like not really a normal house. We built it, constructed it, and um, I remembered when the Baba said we we're going to build the house. So uh, first of all, me, I, I've been doing set for a while, but it's not necessarily for films. I've been doing for corporate organizations, like when they also have their AGM, that's their annual general meeting. That's what I do, the end of the year party. So doing this for a movie production is actually my first time of doing it for a movie production. So I felt it was going to be very challenging. So I started praying, in fact, I even fasted, and I went to watch YouTube videos. So when I saw that there's no difference between what they do, what I do normally, and doing it for set, but you just have to understand, one, what the director wants to see, what um, the camera person wants to see behind the camera. So those are the things that I just put together to build the set. So for Flora's house, um, it was quite challenging, though, because it has um, it is a room and parlor, and everything has to move in like that, like that. And you know, uh, the Baba will say he needs this kind of space. So the space he needs might not work with my own design, but I just have to look for a way around it. And the fact that I had to walk around the clock to achieve that Flora's house was a bit challenging, but it was fun because it's what I love doing. Uh, my name is Baba Samuel Luashion. I'm a child of God, a set designer, a missionary, a filmmaker. I handled sets in the production Abatua season two. The set of uh, Abatua is a bit challenging because we had to do a lot of construction in it. But basically I handled the interior decorations of the rooms and the, in the job Abatua. We give glory to God for the success of this production, but I must let you know that it's quite challenging. It uh, really stretched us and it brought the creative part of us out. I mean the team that are involved in the production. All the crew and um, everyone that was involved in the set because I wasn't the only one that handled sets. It's, uh, it's a teamwork. Myself, Fashilato Messi, and several other people got involved in set, although I handled basically the interior part of the decoration, while Fashola Domesi handled the construction part of the production. It's a bit very challenging, but we'll give glory to God, we have victory at the end of it. Shark, yes boss. Now tonight be the job. And now you go to her. Yes boss. And now for a house you go kill her. Yes boss. Shark. Say I know one hair story. No one tell me story for here. Now clean shot I want. No mess up. I don't need any eyewitness. If you see anybody there, beg wipe and join. Actually, it wasn't easy. I give it to our mothers, our sisters, our 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 grandmas because uh, I've not been putting water on my head for the past one week just because of the rule and uh, I had the first one on a Monday and I was asked that um, I will come back for the next shoot by weekend. I was like, what? Weekend? <laughs> so, and I was told that I should not be putting water on my head because one, I will not be opening it for people to see. I will have to be on face cap and uh, if I cover it, it will be stinking. So, man, I give it to our sisters. They are really trying. They are really, really trying. <laughs> because of your father. My father? He is a very good man. And um, I wanted to give this case to someone like him. You know, someone with great integrity. Your father has that, and I'm sure you do too. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, I do, sir. Have you heard about the accused? Yes. One school teacher who allegedly raped a secondary school student. Yeah, yeah. Your father would have fought tooth and nail to keep someone like that in jail. Because he's a man of integrity, your father. Well, that's very true. It's just what's, for you. What's this for, sir? It is for you to be a man of integrity and to keep someone without integrity in jail. Again, we saw his love for his daughter. In season one, he spoke about my children, but we didn't see the children in season two, we only saw one, who has been with our mom in UK for more than seven years. But 
we now saw a softer side to him. The body we know will not mind whatever the daughter does, whoever she goes out with or whatever time she goes out. But in season two, we are seeing him being mindful of who she moves with, how she dresses. They, they fought a lot about how she dresses. Ah, 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 ah. What was all this? Where are you going just like this? I'm going out with my friends. Like this? What's wrong with what I'm wearing? Kami! Kami! Come, oh, come and see what you are raising you. What come and see what you are raising you. Ah! Your daughter spent seven years with you in the UK. Are you telling me that just one percent of your hospitality cannot rub off on her? I'm still trying to understand what the problem is. She's going out. Are you telling me that you approve of this rag? She's not going now. She's at home. She's going out. Go for peace. It is not possible. Like this. Can you imagine? Dress like Jezebel. Dress like Deborah. Nonsense. Deborah Bawo. I, I, what is the name of that one that uh, caught someone's ear? Delilah. Dress like Delilah. And the time she went out, she, she goes out. The time she goes out. So it was really, really. Um, fantastic to see that soft side to him, that fatherly side to him. And that was why it was more terrible when his daughter died, because we have now seen a softer, gentler, more understanding, cooler man who really, really loves his daughter. He actually took her to lunch, and then she died. And not by any other person, but by his partner in crime, Sonia. And that's why I'm eagerly looking forward to season three. Season three is going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be a bomb. Sis, now like that thing go use you, dump you. Dad, what's going on? Who is she? Nikke, pay her no attention. She's a deranged woman. This old fool. Pay me say make I go seduce my school teacher. What's she talking about? In talk, say make I lie, say one rape. Please. Flora, Flora, shut your dirty mouth. You know her name? Not only my name, sis. He even sabi my account number. He didn't send me one millionaire yesterday. Dad, is this true? Ah, you they call him daddy. Now so you like him. Make small picking, they call you daddy. Shameless man. Flora, that's enough. Leave well, baby girl, enough. leave me alone. This is my world. If you don't like it, get out. Let's go. Flora. What is it? Leave me alone. Leave me alone. Leave me. Leave me. Thank you for the evening. Talking about how I was able to play the role, Nikkei, apart from I mentioned, I mentioned the fact that I prayed, yes, and the fact that I also studied the script well. I would uh, also like to comment on the directing. I just want to thank God for Bradami because uh, Bradami and Bratobi Bertop was the assistant director, so I remember coming on sets and they would be like, project, project, you're not projecting, because I have this very calm, easygoing voice, so Bertami keeps telling me, you can do this, you can do more, 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 more. So if I do something and he's not satisfied, he'll be like, Sharon, more, more, more. This is not Sharon, this is Nikkei. This is Nikkei, so I just thank him for, you know, just good directing because I really, really just used to wonder how he was doing everything. He was the one directing and also the one, you know, behind the camera. So, and also Bertobi to really encourage me. He kept telling me, you can do, you can do this, you can do more, you can put, put in your best. This is not your best, you can do more. So I just wanted to comment on that, that be good directing and also praying and studying the script yeah that was really what helped me to play the role of Nikkei as i did i think this is a wonderful very wonderful initiative um, it's very rare to find um a season film like this in nigeria a season movie like this in nigeria that the story is consistent and um, is is real. Everybody can relate to the happenings of the story, you know, and it's not just that. It's also helping us in our work with God. You know, every episode is full of different messages. Every scene, you know, different messages. I would advise, you know, for... I would advise that the 
this space should be kept, you know, and we should always improve on the standard. The standard has been set, and I believe that this is the minimum we would ever be from here, yeah, from this point. It always gets better and better for gospel films in Nigeria. I also acted as um, the leader of the arm robbery gang that attacked Flora's sister in a dream. Yeah, though I took a role in the first part, but this one was a dream, so it was just a scene. So it's a bit, it's not that challenging now because it's just, it's just a scene. <laughs> Welcome. How was the journey? Wow. Wow. Deep messages. Deep messages. Today has been a wonderful, a wonderful one for us in Beyond Entertainment Show with PBO. I am sure that Abattoir, the movie, has left something in all of us, in all of us. As we await season three of Abattoir, let's keep praying for all the gospel movie makers. I tell you, they are doing great things. May the Lord continue to bless all of them, and especially now for Abattoir, may God bless Damilola Mike Bamiloye, more inspiration, more grace of God upon your life to give us season three that will be better than season one and two put together in the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thank you for sticking to Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. And if the Lord is laying it in your heart to support this show, you can always see the uh, account number on the screen. God Bless you for being part of this. Until I come your way again with another guest. Maybe guests. We don't know the next one is going to be. Thank you so much and keep praying for us. See ya. Modern entertainment Beyond the applause of men we seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Man and women So that for God And this is beyond and today Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO.